have you ever found yourself in a situation where two things don't really work together like you thought they might? Um, as an example, um, today I went to an Indian buffet for lunch and I walked in and I looked at the buffet. Man, this it looked good. There was all kinds of stuff that I wanted. So I sat down and the lady came over and she said, sir, what would you like? And I said, I want the buffet. How much is it? And she says, oh, it's $25. And I thought to myself, $25. And, you know, I looked at the menu and I could order like chicken tikka masala for like $16.99. Um, and uh, that's probably enough for me. But I said to myself, all right, let's just get the buffet anyway. So I went and I got my plate and I put the chicken tikka masala on it and some uh, rice and some other stuff and brought it back and they brought out the naan and I ate it and I was full, right? And I thought to myself, if I had just bought the freaking $16.99, I would have saved some money. I didn't need to spend the extra for all the stuff that I'm not going to use. Well, that's what we're talking about today. Buying things that you don't necessarily need for reasons that don't help you, right? So obviously that was just a net benefit to the restaurant. And good for them, right? They got me. Um, the food was still good. I enjoyed it, but I could have enjoyed it just as much for six bucks less or whatever it was. Um, and that I think is what happens to a lot of people when you look at amplification uh, and particularly the, the wattage. So I'm not getting into class A versus AB versus D versus all that stuff, right? That's, that's a different conversation. Um, this conversation is around buying the right size amplifier for your application. Um, and before we get on the slippery slope of, oh, you need a ton of overhead, uh, probably not. <laughs> you know, some people are like, just buy the 8,000 watt amp because, you know, it'll run cooler and nicer and less pressure. I don't really buy into that stuff. But taking that completely out of the picture, let's talk about what kind of wattage you really need and what kind of wattage you can actually get. So first off, let's talk about how loud do you actually listen to stuff, right? You can listen to movies and, you know, they peak out like for, for mids and highs, like at 105 decibels, which is freaking loud. And if you sat and listened to 105 decibels continuously, you would go deaf. <laughs> you just, you, you just would. And I think bass can hit peaks of 115 or something like that. But for most people, and I did a lot of research, I looked talked to a lot of folks and looked at a lot of websites and read threads and all kinds of stuff. And then I measured my own stuff and I listened to music like at 70 decibels for most folks, their maximum was about 80 decibels, right? So that's, that's what they're looking for. Now it's important to understand what your target is because that's going to determine the amount of amplification that wattage you need for your speakers. All right, so now, just understanding that 80 is about as loud as we're gonna need to get um, on a RMS constant kind of uh, point of view, right? Not, not talking about peaks, right? Because stuff will be able to peak a little bit higher. But 80 decibels, that's our target. So let's look at a very popular speaker so we can do a little bit of math and understand what you need to get to that 80 decibels. We're over on the Klipsch site and I pulled up the specifications for the RP8000F2, right? Klipsch is a very popular brand. People are very familiar with it. So this is gonna be something that shouldn't be foreign to most anybody that's watching this video. Now, some people say that Klipsch overestimates their sensitivity and that might be true, uh, but I think for the purposes of this video, we'll be close enough to, to get the point across. So if we scroll down, and we look at the sensitivity of the speaker, we're looking at a sensitivity of 98 decibels at 2.83 volts at one meter, or one watt at one meter. So what they've done is they take the speaker, they set it down, they take a uh, microphone, put it three point whatever feet away, one meter, and they feed one watt of power into the speaker, and then they measure and see how loud it is, right? And supposedly it comes out at 98 decibels. We're not gonna worry about any of the shenanigans that they might be playing because there are many other speakers that also have this level of sensitivity. So 98 decibels with one watt. Now remember, that is higher than the 80-ish by 18 decibels. Um, and remember, 10 decibels 
uh, of volume increase is about twice as loud. So that's like twice as loud already than most people want to listen to it if you were sitting one meter away from the speaker. Now, there's attenuation due to distance, and we'll talk about that in just a minute too. But I just want to start setting expectations. Okay, this is this is really loud already with one watt. Um, you know, if you listen to audiophiles with their tube amps that put out like five watts, and they're like, I just need that one golden watt. Well, this is why, right? Because for the most part, uh, you're never going to use more than one, two, three, four watts, something like that, uh, to listen to most anything. Um, so just keep that in mind, right? We're, we're setting the scene here so we can talk about what you really need. So now you can understand what the sensitivity is. Now, if you look down, another thing that I want to call out is the uh, the wattage rating power handling of the speaker. So a lot of people are like, ooh, I need a 500 watt speaker because it's louder. Um, not, not really. The sensitivity is the number that you want to look at. That 500 watts of power handling, and if you look at this one, it's 150 watts continuous, 600 watts uh, peak. That just means that's how much juice you can run through this thing before it melts, right? So they're like 150 watts, we're cool with that. Now, 150 watts into this speaker is going to be extraordinarily loud. It's going to be really loud. And we're going to look at the math in just a minute. Um, and 600 watts, I, I can't even imagine. I mean, that's just, you're, you're going to be bleeding afterwards. Now we're in a little Excel spreadsheet that I built. And uh, this is going to show you some of the math behind uh, the calculations that you need to do to understand what wattage amounts to additional decibels. So in the example that we're using now, you can see this one watt is 98 decibels, right? One watt into that clip speaker gives you 98 decibels at one meter. Um, when you double your wattage, you add three decibels of volume. So at two watts is 101, four watts is 104, eight watts gives you 107 decibels of output. And that's roughly twice the volume uh, that you had at 98. Then you go 16, 32, 64, and that gets you to 116 decibels. Um, that's super hellaciously loud. Um, and that's four times the volume. And remember, the peak max that you were looking at ever for home theater stuff is right around this eight watt level. So eight watts is kind of what you would need if you were sitting one meter away to completely hit reference levels for a instantaneous, super loud uh, volume. So you, you don't need more than that. That's you're, you're at the specification, but we do need to consider how far you're sitting away because that's gonna change things. Uh, and that takes us to the next calculation. Now this website is showing the attenuation due to distance. Um, so let's put in that 107 decibels that we just talked about, right? So this is, this is your peak. Um, and uh, we know that that's gonna be at one meter, right? But we wanna know what it's like at three meters uh, because you're just say you're sitting nine, 10 feet away uh, from your, your speakers. So that would take your volume down to 97 decibels. All right. So to hit that peak, let's go ahead and pull this thing back over. And let's just say, um, let's go up to this 116 number, right? So 116 is our known sound pressure level at one meter. And that gets us to 106.5 decibels at three meters or 10 feet. Right, and that's, I think for most folks, you're not gonna be in a regular home any further away that, from your speakers than that, right? Um, even in a theater, if you've got surround, you know, stuff all around you, that's that's about the, the maximum you'll be away. So to get uh, the 106 peak, right, you need to peak out this speaker at 64 watts approximately. That's it, you don't need more than that. That's that's all, all you need, right? So. You know, I, I challenge most people that are like hardcore enthusiasts to, to go back and look and see, you know, what kind of amplification they've got running. Um, and, you know, you're doing 200 watts, 300 watts channel, that kind of thing. Um, is it something you should have spent the money on? Maybe. But from a mathematics point of view, you obviously will never, ever need that much power. And from a headroom point of view, I don't really buy into that. Uh, you know, I trust that amplifiers will work the way they're built to work. And I, I don't care, you know, if, if, if I'm using most of the amplifier because it's supposed to do that. It's built to do that, right? Um, and, you know, if I buy an amp that says it does 100 watts RMS, well, it's well capable enough to do everything that I need 
in my room for that single channel. I don't need to buy something that's rated at 500 watts RMS just because I want to be careful. So, so that's the, that's the kind of mathematics behind your amplification, right? You need to look at the uh, sensitivity of your speaker. You need to look at uh, the amount of wattage that you have. Look at the chart that I have here, and then also look at the distance that you're sitting away. And with those numbers, you can kind of come up with what kind of wattage you need to hit your 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 levels, right? And man, for most speakers, you know, 64 watts is is going to be plenty more than you would ever ever need. Um, and you can kind of do a linear. Um, adjustment here. So if your speakers were 89, you would just subtract that, right? And if you were running like some 101 sensitivity rated speakers, you know, you need even less power. So the next thing I want to talk about is how much wattage you can actually pull off the wall, right? So um, if we take a look at this website, you know, how many watts can an outlet handle, right? Um, if you're looking at, you know, your typical home kind of deal here, 110 watts, 120 watts, at 15 amps, that's a maximum of 1,650 watts. That's really all you're gonna pull off. So in the standard home, if you have one plug on the wall and you've kind of got like a media room and you're plugging your television and your AVR and your Blu-ray player and your uh, subwoofers and whatever else you've got plugged in, that's all the juice that you've got to play with, right? Enough power that could then generate through amplifier 1,650 watts but you have to consider that part of this is being consumed by everything else. Uh, so, you know, I think when you see now uh, 20 amp gets you up to 2200 watts total. So that's, that's a little bit more, but you know, once you get into that, you're getting to more dedicated bills and you don't see a lot of 20 amps just in living rooms. Um, so I think it's safe for us for 99% of the people out there to look at this 15 amp uh, kind of rating. So if you go over and look at the XPA 11, um, from, uh, from our friends over at Emotiva, which make great gear. You know, I, I really like it. Um, you know, I'm a little concerned though with, with these power ratings. So let's look at the power ratings here and see what this thing is claimed to do. Um, it shows 300 Watts RMS and eight ohms, two channels driven, um, and, and for the single channel module, so little monoblocks and then 65 Watts, uh, two channels driven in the stereo modules. And if you look, there are one, two, three, four of the duals and three of the singles. And if I did my math right, that's 1,420 watts uh, RMS, right? So if this thing is just kind of humming along, doing its thing, you know, it's going to pretty much consume everything, right? So just that amp, if you were to push it at RMS, you know, it, it almost consumes the whole wall socket and you don't have much left for anything else. And woes be if you plug in a subwoofer. Now a subwoofer can actually use a lot of juice, right? It's gonna use a lot more than what you use to power your mids and highs. And as an example, let's look at the, uh, the M215. And this is a, a, a very popular subwoofer uh, from Monolith, um, Monoprice, Monolith line. And this thing has a 2000 watt RMS amplifier. So obviously, this thing is never going to be used at 2000 watts RMS because your circuit would pop. Just you can't, it's just not enough power to go around to everything. Um, so, you know, when you see 2000 watts, um, if you're not pushing this off a dedicated 20 amp circuit um, or move up to 240 volt, 30 amp or something like that, you know, the, it's, it's never going to use that power. It just, it just never will. And you really don't need it to anyway. So this really gets into marketing fluff. Uh, so there you go. That's a lot of information around wattage and amplification and available power and that kind of stuff to help you think about what's the right amp for you. Be very thoughtful and do your research when it comes time to buy something. And just because the numbers that somebody puts on their advertising are big doesn't mean that's going to be something that you need or would ever use or the amp could even ever do. Um, and look at your speakers because a lot of them will be like, you know, power rated at 100 watts RMS, right? They don't want more power than that. They, they don't want you to, you know, jam 200 watts RMS all the time through this thing and slowly melt them. Uh, so just be thoughtful. Um, and I'm curious, 
what what did you buy for your setup? I mean, do you have some monster amps plugged into a single wall socket? And if so, does that work well for you? Um, you know, for me, I've got a 20 amp circuit in my theater and I've got everything, uh, most of my, all my amplification other than the subwoofers is plugged in there. And then I've got another 15 amp circuit that I've got my subs plugged into. And I, I guarantee you, I use 10% of the maximum uh, output power uh, of the amplification across all these devices because otherwise I'd just be popping circuits left and right, right? Just, it would never work. Um, and it gets louder than I could ever possibly hope to, to, to stand. So um, don't be fooled by some of the crazy ratings and don't buy into the hype of big numbers because that's often not what you need for your environment. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, make sure to like and subscribe, hit the buttons and do all that stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video.